Well, we've got base camp set up then, and it's probably taken us best part of a day to hook the gear from up there where the cars are, and then we've climbed, or carried I should say, all the gear down the rocks, which was a bit unsteady when you're carrying uh, leisure batteries and huge boats down all those rocks and then through all this mud. I mean, we've only been here a short while and you can already see that there's loads of mud about, but that's normal on the Orient. And we've carried all the boats all the way down there just to that gap over there, which is where we're going to launch from. Right then, here we go, day one, and we're out on the boat, and we're going to have a scout around, see if we can see a few signs of fish. We're lucky that today it's quite flat calm, not much of a ripple on the water, and um, hopefully if we get out into the middle we might hear any fish that are crashing out, because obviously sound carries quite well when you're on the uh, on the Orient. Um, last year when we were here we heard quite a few fish and saw quite a few fish showing that were several hundred metres away from us so that's what we're going to be doing today, spending most of the day mooching around in the boats and looking for signs and seeing, seeing if we can get on onto some fish because obviously we're only here for a short period of time, we're only here for a few days and the most important thing is to is to find some fish and uh, and get on them and we're only going to do some day fishing we're not going to do any night fishing because all the night zones are stitched up it's quite busy as the water level goes down you get um, quite a few anglers fishing in the uh, the night spots and um, obviously the lines are well spread out which sort of stitches up areas so it is going to be just fishing from the boat for the next couple of three four days and uh, see how we get on but yeah the most important thing is finding them fish and uh, that's what we're going to be doing today so hopefully we'll find a few I'm not sure if you can see that clearly, but right down there is an absolutely gorgeous clear patch. And on this lake at the moment, there's an awful lot of weed all over the bottom. So when you come across these areas, they're obviously uh, prime for a little bit of fishing. So what we're going to do is bait a few of them and come back to them tomorrow and see if the bait's gone. And if the bait's gone, then obviously it's uh, a good sign that there's fish dotted around but that is one really good clear area and there's a few more over the back there and down here as well so they look perfect and that's what we're really looking for you know obviously we're looking for signs of carp as well but those are a great indication that there's uh, something happening down there on the bottom Jim with the biggest fish of the day so far. This one is uh, a lovely 40 plus mirror. Just banked it now. We've only been in the boat probably about two hours today. He's all the actions on Jim's side so far. He's had a this one and he's lost one as well. So beautiful fish, Simon. Yeah, gorgeous, mate. Lovely. Not lovely colour to it as well. Not bad, mate. Right. For a bit of day Good fishing. Time, yeah. Absolutely epic day today on the Orient. Myself and Jim just nipped to the lake for four or five days fishing. I know that sounds a little bit ludicrous because you don't go to the Orient for such a short period of time, but we have decided to have a little bit of a fish out the boat. And today we've gone and caught five fish. And the biggest is probably close to 40 pounds that Jim's caught. And this is my biggest, which is a 31 pound mirror. Absolutely gorgeous. Five in the day on the boat. Marvellous, absolutely marvellous. All right, Jim has just had an absolute unit of a fish. We haven't weighed him yet, but we're guessing he's over 50. Yeah, it feels yeah. real heavy, it? We've left the scales back at the, uh, the base camp, so Jim's going to go and get them now. But uh, I'm sure you'll agree that is an absolute unit of a, an Orient car. Beautiful fish, sir. Yeah, beautiful car, mate. Great fight as well, so well done, mate. Let's keep hold of him and let's get a weight of him. It's always the... The main purpose of coming to somewhere like the Orient is to just get that one take, get on the fish, have a chance and obviously we've been here now two days and we've had quite a few chances. We've uh, Jim has now landed five fish, I've had two fish and he's lost one as well so between us we've had seven fish 
five takes yesterday and three takes today so far, which have all just come to Jim's rod. So um, he's currently over there, just uh, went into the bank to, to weigh his fish. There he is over there, he went back to get the scales. But yeah, that is the size of the Orient. Look at it, it's absolutely massive. Thousands of acres of water. And that's where we bivvied up, just over there in the distance in Bivy City. And that takes us around about half an hour to get from there to where we are here. So some serious graft gone into the, the day fishing, let alone the setting up. There's the two bivvies, just behind Bivy City, which is where there's two Belgian lads. Yep, we're here, we're on fish, and we're catching them as well, so absolutely great. Three fish today, yeah, two fish I should say today for me. Jim's had two as well and lost one. Absolutely gorgeous fish, 31 pound common. So then, can you hack a day on the Orient? That's what we've just done. There's the boats, brought them all in. Three of them, rode them all back to save on battery power. And massive storm now. Chucking it down. I'm loaded up with the old rucksack, all my gear, and I've got to wade all the way through all of this lot. Can you do it? Yep, lots of people say they can, but not many do. Proper man's lake, this place. Just chucking it down. Got a good old walk now to the bivvy. Jim's up there through all of this stuff, through all the mud, and we're going to repeat it again tomorrow. Hey, the things you do for carp, eh? I'm going back, and there's Jim, carrying a spare battery, a leisure battery, not a Duracell battery, a leisure battery, through all of this. Just for the engine tomorrow. Proper man's fishing. And believe me, he gets stuck in all this mud. How do? Not bad. <laughs> and he's got to go all the way back there. With a leisure battery. Yeah. That's the Orient. Hey. There you go. Back in the bivvy and the rain is absolutely lashing it down. So, it looks like being a bit of a wet night. Boats are gonna be full of water in the morning probably, and uh, it's probably gonna be a, an uncomfortable day in the boat tomorrow as well, but today we've had five takes, three, uh, three takes to Jim, and two to me. Uh, 41 and a 51 for Jim, and two to 33 pounds for myself, so. Nice to get a bit of action. Wouldn't mind a better stamp of fish for myself, but you know, there's always tomorrow. We've got tomorrow and uh, Friday. It's Thursday tomorrow, and we've got Friday left, so I've got to go for my six mile run in the morning, because I'm doing New York Marathon in a couple of weeks' time, so I'm trying to keep fit, and every morning I'm out there running. So you combine that running with all of this work on the Orient, it's a, a pretty tough week for me, but I was up at five this morning. I did six miles, and then we sorted out all the gear and uh, rode out to the spots, which are right out there in the distance. That's the bivvy set up of the guys that are in uh, Bivy City, and we're fishing basically right out there in the middle. But uh, yeah, got to do it again tomorrow. Rain's now easing off. Could do with a good night's sleep tonight because uh, I had hardly any sleep last night. It was a bit noisy with the rain, and uh, I had to get up early at five to to do me run, so I was a bit, bit of clock watching really, so I could do the kip today, uh, good kip tonight, and uh, yep, yeah, start early again tomorrow. 
two days left. When people see postings about the Orient on Facebook, you often see underneath it somebody asking why is it so hard, why is it so difficult, what is it about the Orient that makes it so special? And it's not just the acres and acres of water, because there's 6,000 acres of water here. Um, it's the fishing regulations, there's quite a lot of areas that you're not allowed to, to bivvy up in. There's a lot of um, rules like you can only fish 100 metres out, then you've also got the conditions on the bank, you know, there's a lot of mud out there, there's a lot of really sort of difficult areas to get to as well, so it means hugging a lot of gear, you know, leisure batteries, boats, fishing equipment, your food, your water and things like that. You can't just drive to the back of a lot, a lot of these swims, or well, most of the swims on the lake you can't get to. So, you know, that in itself is a, it's a military operation to do that. And then you combine that with the low stock of fish that's in here as well. You know, you really have got a very, very difficult venue to, to tackle. And it's no wonder that a lot of people who come here do spend an awful lot of time sitting there waiting and blanking. You know, you often hear of guys coming out to the Orient for sort of three, four, five weeks at a time, especially the continental guys, <coughs> the Germans and, and the French, etc. And you can be sat there for weeks on end waiting for the fish to come through. And it is difficult, it's very, very difficult. And, you know, I'm a very, I'm, I'm into my fitness and stuff like that. I'm a very active person. So, you know, even for a fit guy like me, it's, it's, it's difficult coming out here. So if you are contemplating having a session on the Orient, don't think it's going to be easy at all. It is a very, very hard water, very hard water. It's, it's definitely most suited for the, the experienced carper. If you've never fished outside of a commercial carp water, then maybe don't uh, come straight onto the Orient because you'll soon sort of fall flat on your face, really. It's a tough venue, but it is a great venue. It's a very rewarding water as well. So, you know, the, it is really the pinnacle of overseas carping in my mind and an awful lot of other people's minds as well. So. You know, you can you can see why people hold it in high esteem. Well, there you go, an Orient 50 pounder. Absolutely made up with that, I really am been really really hard work as it always is on this place loads of mud loads of traipsing gear backwards and forwards tough conditions lots of rain but great company with Jim and uh, we're both going home with 50 pounders to, to our name so still got a day left as well really really made up with this one first fish of the day been out here since just after first life and uh, this one's just trundled off not a great fight but not really that bothered. I've got an Orient 50 under my belt. Fantastic. On the key cray as well. Brilliant, let's put him back. Stunning, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Orient 50. Oh, get in here. That's amazing. There he goes. Mega. <laughs> I can't believe that. Fantastic.